Hey there toy collector friends and Transformers fans alike. Welcome back to the channel, I'm the time traveling toy collector and this is the Takara Tomy Hasbro Transformers Autobot Huffer as re-released uh, in as close to G1 format as we're perhaps ever gonna see as part of the War for Cybertron Kingdom Trilogy. So this is, um, if you like, a new figure, new-ish figure, but from a recent range that is no longer. So it's it's uh, uh, it's it's current, <laughs> but it's also current past. Um, so which is so, uh, and, and again, this is a range that I dipped into for some of the larger figures, for some of the the because it, it really did start to sh show us um, some G one goodness, but in a in in a current line with up to date. Um, significantly improved engineering um, but the mini bots which you know to be fair I mean this is a deluxe class figure um, so technically not a mini bot per se um, we know the original mini bots probably came up to about uh, Huffer's hip um, but I never really cap I never really owned the um, many of the mini bots from the original G1 uh, run of the toy range um, but it was only recently seeing a couple of them at London Film and Comic Con in London that made me go. Actually, these are quite de <laughs> these are quite decent um, figures. They're they're not too bad, especially when you hold them up against some of the Studio Series eighty six figures. Now I know we're starting to see a couple of them bleed into existence. Uh, the most obvious example being um, Brawn, which is going to materialise very shortly, um, and we may well see more but I thought well actually I've got Braun so he's on pre-order um but what I'm really keen to do is is build this 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 aspect of my collection up so why not start um trying to dig out some of these and some of them were available um at London Film and Comic Con and I was very lucky to pick um pick them up and Huffer is one such uh, entry into the collection. There are some others which we'll be touching on soon. And to be honest, it's quite nice to be looking at um, Kingdom uh, War for Cybertron figures from the perspective of um, them being a bit of a historical collector, collectible now, because when I very first came back into collecting, that was the current uh, range. But now, of course, we're in um, Legacy and Legacy Evolution. And we've also got Studio Series 86 plowing on with their quite extensive range, actually. So anyway, without too much further ado, let's have a look at the packaging first of all. This is a, I'm gonna sort of almost leave this here because it's, the, the packaging in and of itself is nothing too exciting to write home about. I'm gonna pop Huffer across a little bit. But what we can see here is that beautiful Transformers box art that really is synonymous with collecting Transformers. Um, and if you like Transformers uh, and classic Transformers as much as I do, can I just take a second to say, can you also please like this video while you're about it? If you haven't already, that would be so great. I'll hold I'll hold a couple of seconds. There you go. Done it? Brilliant. Whilst you're about that, could you also subscribe to the channel? Because so many people watch the videos, but they don't necessarily subscribe to the channel. So they find them through searches or through recommendations by YouTube. Um, it would be great if you could subscribe. You don't have to commit to every single video. I know that not everything will be everybody's taste, but it would be really great for me if you could. It's a small click for you and a gigantic click for the channel. That would be fantastic. Anyway, back to the case in point. This artwork is absolutely beautiful, as is so often the case with um, Transformers through time. I I'm not so sure. And again, I wasn't very big on it during the 90s and the early noughties um, because I wasn't collecting them candidly. But I don't think that the Transformers universe, multiverse, playverse, whatever it is, really continued that fantastic artwork trend. Um, I know some of the box art for G1 stuff on the front was a bit curious because it depicted the um, the robot forms usually getting into all sorts of positions that, let's be honest, were impossible. Um, but the backs of those boxes always had such fantastic, la um, epic battle sequences with huge robots, um, often duplicated, uh, often mistransformed sometimes. Um, but always awe-inspiring and something that dragged me in 
and made me want to collect more to create just a, a, you know, a fraction of what the imagination of the, of the artists there were displaying. Uh, so it's really great. I think this is another thing that hooked me in to see this sort of artwork back in action um, on the War for Cybertron boxes. Um, so yeah, so I really love that. The back for this box, again, un, un, like so many others, is of course your traditional uh, product shots, which isn't that exciting. But we have um, the golden disc, some of our star players from War for Cybertron there. But I'm just going to leave that there because it's a nice, it's a nice artistic representation um, of Huffer. And frankly, what's really nice to see, and this is where we can bring Huffer front and centre, is that the articulation of Huffer actually does match um, what his um, artwork demonstrates. He's very articulate. Um, you've got this lovely blaster here, which is uh, cast in plastic with some nice uh, orange detailing that matches his own body. And you've got this curious attachment here, which is, you know, essentially uh, some sort of blast shield for him. Um, they're optional. I mean, you don't have to store it there. You could store it on the back. Um, but it's nice to see him all tooled up. You've got, I mean, I'm not going to bore you with every aspect of, of his articulation. Um, but you do get an awful lot of posability, um, which is so nice to see. And of course, something that would be completely and utterly alien um, to those G1 figures, those G1 mini bots um, that, you know, sadly did not necessarily in reality live up to what we were really hoping they could do. But that's where our imagination came in. And you're not going to hear me moan about that because I'm all about the imagination 120,000%. Um, and in fact, that that is one of my key drivers because these figures, these toys, um, the models that we look at here, um, they all key into my nostalgia and hopefully a bit of your nostalgia too. Um, and I think seeing these G1 1980s toys recaptured, remoulded and re-engineered in such a way that's true to their original. And I know they've sort of been recycled through various iterations, be it, be it the Power of the Prime stuff or the Generation 2 stuff or recolours and this, that and the other, my goodness me, all of those things. But I don't think until we've got this War for Cybertron series of toys have we seen that uh, immersion back into the G1 aesthetic so purely and of course that's bled into the studio series 86 range which is you know possibly my favorite range of all so hurrah for that um of course part of the g1ness means we do get some back kibble goodness me it's nowhere near as uh, bad or as intrusive as the back kibble we got before and there's quite a bit of hollowness in the back of his feet um and i and i take that on board but you know what this kind of thing is what g1 looked like you folded them in half, you bent their legs, bent their arms, and there you were, you suddenly had a truck. Um, because the, the vehicle mode was the priority. The robot mode, hey, they were aliens, they could look like whatever they wanted to, so we don't get to, you know, to have too much judgment on it. But I think a beautiful little figure, and he has a few compatriots that I've been lucky enough to pick up. Obviously, I've already done, uh, got Cosmos through the legacy, the Velocitron line, um, and... Um, We've got Beach Coma that's just come out. Uh, I'm hoping there's more. I'm hoping there's more. I've I've just narrowly I've just managed to get hold of Warpath and Pipes, um, and a couple of others. So I'm very very excited about that. And I'll, I'll come to those in due course. Um, but it's nice to be able to sort of get the gang back together again, um, even though I never sort of had that gang, um, because you know, I, 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 yes, I was a child in the eighties. But I still knew that the, the robot forms of those toys looked a little bit rubbish. Um, I know that's sacrilegious and I say it from a place of love. But the child in me, the, well, the child that was me back then, was kind of like, yeah, but they, but they look a bit rubbish. I don't really want them. Um, I was a bit of a Transformers snob in the day. So that's why I was after the, the, the Dinobots or I was after Optimus and Ultra Magnus and Megatron and Galvatron and sort of the bigger hitters. Um... So I was, yeah, I think if I'm honest with myself and you, um, I was probably a bit of a Transformers snob. I'm, and I, I'm, I'm really sorry about it now, um, particularly having picked up a G1, uh, a G1 Brawn as part of my haul, um, a proper G1 Brawn um, as part of um, my haul at London Film and Comic Con. Um, I wish I picked up more, to be honest. But they do, I mean, 
at some point I'll do the I'll do like a three phase brawn <laughs> brawn look at look at um, and we'll we'll see. But anyway, from a huffer from a huffer point of view, I really love this figure. I really love how they've taken that original concept and made him into a tough little robot um, with fantastic. I mean, I don't know how well you can see. I see if I can zoom in a bit more on that face sculpt. Um, you know, it really is. It really is quite quite something, and so much better than we ever got than we ever got with our G our G one originals. So uh, yeah, so let's get him back over here, and uh, I'm now going to transform him up into his sort of uh, little truck mode, uh, faster than you can say, Ultra Magnus and Fortress Maximus. And here we are with Huffer all transformed up into his uh, truck mode. Now, of course, it's a well, let's call it a minicon version of a truck mode. But nevertheless, it's a hit. It's actually really, really quite nice. Let's keep on keeping him in the light for you. Um, let me come in a little bit closer, in fact. That might make life easier. So here we have Huffer uh, in his truck mode. Let's move the box out of the way a little more for us there. Um, transformation was relatively straightforward. Uh, maybe took about five minutes, if that. Uh, following the instructions, which of course come as always is the case um, in a little booklet. Uh, I was just trying to get them for you and managed to throw them on the floor, so that was clever. You've got transclimate pl plastic around the cab, and actually you can see through, um, and it's not too distracting. You don't sort of see anything too uh, weird inside. Sometimes that's not the case. Um, here we have his shield, and interestingly, which is a nice touch, uh, and I wasn't aware of it, so you may not be. You may, of course, be very aware of it. His gun splits in half and then forms either side of the back portion of the vehicle, uh, which I thought was particularly innovative. Um, less innovative are his fists just sort of sitting there going, here's my fists, um, which is very G1, I must admit. Um, but you've got a little bit of, you know, reverse uh, brake lighting, although you can see a bit of leg joint there. Um, there's a bit of gap here. I'm tearing it apart a bit. I don't mean to, because actually, as a as a little vehicle, it's it's actually. Oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Let's re refocus that slightly for you there. Um, but yeah, as a little vehicle, it's um, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly adequate, uh, and I I really like it. And I think once I start getting him alongside the other mini bots um, from from the the kingdom and, and similar lines. It's going to be quite the reunion uh, of these characters. And actually, I never had, but they do. They are very reminiscent of their G1 iteration and therefore of the, of the cartoon iteration, which I think is the, the key thing, really, because the cartoon it was where, is where our imagination was embodied, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really any gimmick that, uh, to, to the character. Uh, and when we look at Pipes at some point in the future, He's essentially the exact same mould with some minor retooling and turning of parts around and obviously repainting. Um, but I really like this. I think I think it's a really nice little figure. I think it's obviously a, a, a million worlds away from um, the Huffer we had in the 1980s, uh, which is really the only one I'm interested in comparing with on a personal level. Um, so I really like it. I like the way his, his arms become the... the um, the exhaust pipes without his arms having to be um, just pipes and sacrificed as pipes. I think the articulation there is nice. There's some some nifty um, concealed wheels as part of the transformation. I really, really like it. I think Huffer, uh, it, it's a, it was not something I would have been drawn to as a, as a, as a toy or as a character, um, perhaps previously. Uh, but then seeing some of the other range and the quality of the others in the range, um, and seeing a couple of them available for really good prices, in my opinion, I thought I'd be a fool not to. Uh, and so I did. Uh, and I'm very, very glad that I did. Um, because he really is a very, very nice, uh, a recapturing of that G1 aesthetic, as I've already mentioned. But also, in his own right, he's a very uh, characterful figure. Um, I do think it's a bit of a shame we've got things like that. But... 
there's a part of me that goes, yeah, but that's part of the charm of G of G1 stuff. Um, now, in this day and age, and certainly as we've moved into the um, legacy range and Studio Series 86, that's not something I would hope to be seeing. Um, because, as I say, it screams G1, and part of the joy, for me, of the War for Cybertron trilogy toys, as well as the legacy stuff and the Studio Series stuff, is that they've addressed the shortcomings of the engineering of the 80s around these sort of figures. And, and they are now the, the, the robot figures we imagined and the vehicle figures we remembered, but elevated to a, you know, a higher degree of engineering um, and an overall higher degree of standards. So I'm looking forward to exploring some of these other figures, getting them together and, and doing some nice collective photos with them. Anyway, maybe you already own Huffer. Maybe Huffer is now something that you're thinking, actually, yeah, I should try and dig out some of these. Or maybe you've got the Generation 1 cast in their Generation 1 um, format. I didn't catch that. Uh, Could you try that's, again? Yeah, no, that's Siri uh, joining in. Other, other personal assistants are available. Uh, somehow he's decided to try and listen to everything I'm saying. Very sneaky. Um, but if you have got them, um, by all means, let me know whether you think in the comments that this step into the War for Cybertron figures, the Legacy series, uh, Studio series 86, etc., is an improvement, or whether we are now starting to sacrifice some of our imagination because we have that um, engineering in place. Personally, I'm not so sure that it's, it is such an offset. I think we can cope with both. But I'd be super interested to hear what people think. So do drop me a message in the comments. Um, I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts. And of course, if this has stirred something within you to start collecting Transformers toys, or you're already collecting Transformers toys, or you've never been particularly interested in collecting Transformers toys, and now you've seen this, you're really not interested in collecting Transformers toys. All of those are perfectly great and valid and wonderful. So if it's had any of those outputs, then please hit the like button, as I mentioned earlier, and why not subscribe to the channel? It really is so, so helpful for me um, and keeping the channel going. Thank you so much for your time for the last 20 minutes or so. You've been a fantastic audience. I've been the time traveling toy collector and this has been the Takara Tomy Hasbro War for Cybertron Kingdom Edition Autobot Huffer. Uh, I very much look forward to seeing into it in a future video. All it remains for me to say is as ever, a thing of beauty really is a toy forever. Take care and bye-bye for now.